Well, good day, everybody, wherever you are. I want to appreciate you joining our masterclass. Uh, this is me uh, speaking with a very distinguished leader in business about uh, his or her perspectives so that we can all learn from these wonderful minds. And it's truly a privilege for me to invite onto our masterclass today, Jim Citron. Jim is a, uh, is a leader uh, extraordinaire. Uh, I've known Jim for, for, for many, many years. He is the head of the Spencer Stewart's uh, North American CEO practice. He's been on the board of uh, board of directors for Spencer Stewart for over 20 years. But in addition to being, you know, one of the biggest headhunters of all time, uh, he's also supremely, you know, lovely person who plays tennis. And uh, he's going to tell me a bit about that, I'm sure. But he's been involved in some of the major CEO board searches and management leadership uh, searches. Um, in time. In addition, Jim's, uh, Jim's an author and uh, he's written many books, uh, some books that have been incredibly helpful to me as I got started here being CEO. Uh, but he's written a new one and this new one is entirely uh, topical. It's very uh, relevant for our times. And the book is called uh, Leading at a Distance. And uh, the purpose of this conversation today is for me to introduce you to Jim and then we're going to talk a bit about this book that Jim has written, and we're going to learn from it because I know it's going to be very helpful to all of us. So, Jim, welcome to Wreck It, and thank you for spending time with us. Thanks, Lakshman. I am so happy to be here with you today. We're not far away. I'm sitting in beautiful Kensington, London, and let me tell you why I'm so happy to be with you. There are two things that have given me huge joy and energy over the last quarter of a century and they're both resident in this conversation. Number one is I love developing trusted relationships with leaders at all levels. And as you say, we go back many years, have many mutual friends, and it's been a real fun and pleasure and privilege to become friends and uh, mutual advisors to each other over many years. That's really what I do. But the second thing is, as you said, I've written, this will be the eighth book, Leading at a Distance, and I love researching and then teaching. And I love sharing knowledge to make people better, happier, more successful. And so this is an opportunity to do both of those things today. Excellent. Well, really look forward to this. Jim, how do you come into writing this book? Well, this particular book came about last summer. Uh, at Spencer Stewart, we have one, one of my partners, a brilliant woman named Darlene DeRosa. She actually has a PhD in the topic of virtual leadership. I'm not kidding. She got it about 15 years ago. And when I met her, I said, Darlene, that has to be the most obscure PhD in history. Well, lo and behold, a couple of months later, when the world shut down, she went from the periphery of the world to being a rock star and helping advise clients on how to shift to remote work and how to build cultures, how to onboard teammates, how to keep their businesses running virtually. So last summer we decided to collaborate on the book uh, and we interviewed over 100 CEOs, including yourself. Uh, we surveyed over 1000 organizations. And what was amazing about this experience is that unlike other books that I've done, including you're in charge now what, which you're referring to the first 100 days, this one had literally a 100% take up rate in research. Everyone around the world, everyone in Reckitt has been living with this shared experience. And so people want to talk about it, share and learn. And it's been a really fantastic experience. And I'm really proud of what we've what we've done. And we'll talk about Reckitt's future of work because it's a terrific example of many of the best practices we've learned. Well, you know, when you spoke with these people, what sort of mood were they in? Were they, and obviously you spoke with them over a period of time, you know, start of the pandemic, middle end, or not end, whatever you want to call this phase that we're going through. Um, tell me a bit about the mood of the CEOs as they were, as they were speaking to you. Most of the CEOs, uh, when they engaged with, with me on these conversations, basically I, we started with the question to say, how has working remotely been for you personally and for your organization? Has it been a net positive, a neutral, or a net negative? For most of the CEOs, they said that it was a slight net positive because they were able to get more done, 
eliminate a lot of the business travel, but get a lot more communication going with their teams, with their shareholders, with their boards remotely. When we actually surveyed a large group of CEOs, it wasn't quite as positive. They basically, in the survey response, they viewed it as kind of a neutral to a slight negative. But the employees around the world, about 70% of them said that it was a slight net positive because it eliminated the stresses of commuting, travel, getting into the grind of, of the office and it freed up more time. So that was kind of in last summer. By the fall and by the early winter, it was kind of flipping a little bit and things like now we all know the risk of Zoom burnout and that was taking a bit of a toll. And it wasn't affecting people evenly. Some, uh, some people who have the privilege of having home offices or having perhaps even second homes or have outgrown kids who they were back living with, for them, it was fantastic. For young uh, urban individuals, uh, singles, they found it very difficult. But the single cohort uh, for whom it was toughest was young working moms. And the research from leanin.org showed that working mothers spent an average 20 hours more a week, a week. That's like the amount of a, of a part-time job, job. job. Right. on top of their normal responsibilities. And that was creating enormous stress. And that was whether home childcare and remote schooling of their kids or caring for elderly parents or others. So, so it's not a one size fits all. And I think it's incumbent on the managers and, and, and leaders to be highly sensitive to the individual situations of the employees. But I think most, it's been a learning journey for everybody and everybody's gotten used to this kind of communication and, and we see lots of advantages to it. Now, the interesting question is, how is leadership gonna change going forward in what is going to be much more of a quote hybrid uh, future? I do wanna to come to the shadow uh, a bit later, just about what it has done, particularly to uh, to women. Uh, uh, but what are the big takeaways from the various conversations you've had? Uh, what does it mean to lead from a distance? How different is it uh, from leading, you know, at proximity? I think there are two big changes in leadership requirements, and this is not only from this research, but also from observation and in our work with clients, we've seen an evolution of the position specifications over the last five years. I'll just comment on the CEO level just because that's what we've studied. Over the last five years, up until, uh, say, the end of 19, uh, 2019, there's been a gradual shift toward stakeholder management taking a more front and center role, not just shareholder returns and maximizing that. That was slow and gradual. But over the last year, the acceleration to a purpose at being at the center of everything uh, that, that is important has really accelerated. I know, I mean, in your leadership here at Reckitt, the fact that you have used this pandemic to accelerate really years and years of work on Reckitt and formerly Reckitt Bank users purpose, and I'm sure that has galvanized the entire company. Well, we're going to do a bit of a rapid fire uh, set of things. I'm going to, you know, because again, part of this is tips you learned. And uh, so one idea for each one of these, right, which I think will be useful. And given your learnings of the book, just stay connected. One tip. Keep a list of everyone who is really important to you. Make sure that you touch base with them at least once a week or some frequency. One tip to build trust. Be vulnerable, be real, be human. One tip to drive innovation in this new world. Keep in mind that if you think about the history of television, when television started, all it did was take radio presenters and broadcasting, broadcast them. It took generations for the whole new medium to get created. I think the same is true now. We're at the early days of this hybrid or blended work and find ways, challenge yourselves ways to say, what can we do better in this hybrid environment than we could before, recognizing that we can. Thank you again for joining us. And thanks I deeply so appreciate all your thoughts. Wonderful, thank you so much. And thanks to everybody.